Hola colegas, yo soy Dr. L. Bienvenidos a Mire los Muros de la Patria Mía. En este video voy a explicarles el poema. Right, vamos a empezar en español e inglés para entender mejor el poema para ustedes en su examen. Aquí tenemos información sobre el poema. El autor es Francisco de Quevedo. Él vivía en España. Él nació en 1580 y murió en 1645. El título es Mire los muros de la patria mía. El movimiento es barroco y también es parte del siglo de oro, los años 1500 hasta 1600. Ok, so Francisco de Quevedo. Francisco de Quevedo, from Spain, 1500s, 1600s. And the title is, I saw the walls of my country. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind here, sometimes the students in the past, we've been talking about uh, Muslims and Christians, and the word for that one is moros. So sometimes students have been confused with that uh, letter change in the past and um, started writing something about the Muslims and the Christian conflict. They saw muros. But um, anyway, so just, just be aware that word is very, very close. Muros are walls and moros are the Muslims. Okay, so it's coming from the Baroque time period. It can be a little bit tricky to understand Baroque. We'll take a look at uh, some elements of Baroque in just the next one, which is part of the golden age or golden century, uh, the golden time period, the 1500s and the 1600s. Ya vamos a mirar unos elementos del Baroco. El Baroco usa metáforas, eufemismos, un modo de expresar ideas usando palabras más suaves para el sentido, neologismos, uso de palabras nuevas y alegorías. Y también hay una ornamentación a las palabras. Ok, so, uh, basically Baroque is thinking about the wealth of Spain in the 1500s. Uh, leads to a lot of artists, a lot of literature, a lot of great works of art being created. And to show the wealth that Spain had at that time, they add a lot of ornamentation to the words. There's metaphors, okay, nothing just is what it is, something that's represented for something else. Okay, there's euphemisms, again, uh, different ways of saying things. There's new words being created, there's allegories. Uh, so nothing's ever just straightforward. And they also like to rhyme things a lot, so they switch around the words, that's hyperbaton. And uh, can make it a little bit tricky to understand, but it also, also can be fun to study, also fun to hear the rhymes and look at how they came up with these different rhyme schemes and the beautiful works of art and literature that they came up with. Aquí tenemos el código histórico. Se ve pesimismo porque España está en decadencia por la contrarreforma y la colonización de las Américas. Los judíos y los árabes fueron expulsados en 1492. Okay, so things were going, going great in the 1500s. That's why it's called the Golden Age, um, because there was a lot of gold and wealth coming in from the Americas that were taken from the indigenous people and now flowing into Spain. But uh, during this time period, the Counter-Reformation, we've got the Catholics and the Protestants, some infighting within Christianity. Okay, so anytime they've got a war, now people are focusing on that instead of uh, education or social type things or developing the country. All right, the colonization of the Americas. Okay, people see that, oh, there's gold over there. I'm not going to wait for someone else to bring it back to me and I get a small share of the wealth. I'm just going to go over there myself and get it myself. And a lot of the best and the brightest left the country for that. And then also the expulsion of the Jewish people and the Arabs starting in 1492 or around this time period, maybe it didn't all happen in uh, one year, um, but if we know that the Jewish people were involved in banking, in accounting, okay, that might be a, an important in industry to have if you've got a lot of gold that you need to manage, a lot of wealth to manage. And then also the Arabs were also heavily influenced in the university system, in the education. So if uh, people have money that they need to manage, uh, it might be important that they have an education to go along with that as well. And uh, so now in the 1600s, Spain's really starting to decline. That's what we're going to see in this poem today. Aquí tenemos unos recursos literarios. Carpe diem, bebir en un momento. Soneto, dos cuartetos y dos tercetos. 
Quarteto, estrofa de cuatro líneas. Terceto, estrofa de tres líneas. En decasílabo, verso con once sílabos. All right, so these literary devices, you may be asked to cite these as you're writing an essay on your big test. So you might need to be able to say, okay, this element here is carpe diem, and then cite specific examples from the text as to why. So carpe diem is a Latin term meaning to seize the day or to live in the moment. Uh, sonnet, it's got two quartets and two tercets. So a quartet means it's got four lines. A tercet means it's got three lines and decasyllable, 11 syllables. Okay, and then sometimes they might count it a little bit different. So when I'm typically counting these things, I'm coming up with 13. But if they've got two syllables um, from different words next to each other, they're gonna only count that as one. So just, just be aware of that. So if you're coming up with 13 for some of these, might be on their counting system a little bit different with 11. So N is kind of like the word for uno for one. And then DEC is the word for de, uh, 10, kind of like DA. So they're saying one, and 10 is how they're coming up with 11 for that word, and deca, and deca syllable. One plus 10, put them together, oh, syllables. All right, ¿qué es el soneto? El soneto tiene 14 líneas. Dos cortetos, cuatro líneas. Dos tercetos, tres líneas. El esquema de rima es A, B, B, A. A, B, B, A. C, D, C. D, C, D. Los verbos son... Los versos son en decasílabos, las rimas son consonantes. All right, so it's very important that we know what the sonnet is. We may be asked to describe elements of the sonnet on our big test. Again, it's always going to have 14 lines, two quartets, two tercets. Uh, and then look for the rhyme scheme. It's always going to start off A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. And then the second part might vary, but this is the format for this poem, but other sonnets might have a different a slightly different ending of the rhyme scheme. Again, 11 syllables per line, and then a consonant rhyme is just your typical your typical rhyme scheme. Dog, bog, fog, jog. That's your typical type of consonante. Okay, ya vamos a hacer una práctica aquí. Explica por qué España está en declive en los años 1600 and da ejemplos específicos del texto que apoyan tus ideas. So again, think, why are some reasons that Spain is in decline in the 1600s? And what are some specific examples from this poem that are leading us to believe that's true? Okay, aquí ustedes tienen mi ejemplo. España está en declive durante los años 1600 por la contrarreforma la emigración y la expulsión de los judíos y los árabes. Aquí hay unos ejemplos del texto que apoyan a mis ideas. Unas referencias al declive de España son los muros ya desmoronados, quejosos los ganados, mi báculo más corvo y menos fuerte, vencida de la edad, sentí mi espada. All right, so again, remember that Spain is in decline because of the Counter-Reformation, emigration, expulsion of the Jews and Arabs, and here's some ways that the author is referring to that, again, through allegories, through metaphors. And we've got uh, los muros ya desmoronados, the walls, they're crumbling. Quejosos los ganados, the cattle are complaining. Mi báculo más curvo menos fuerte, my stick, my walking stick, more curved, less strong. Vencida de la edad, sentí mi espada. And uh, avenged by age, uh, is felt by, I feel it in my sword. Okay. Aquí tenemos un resumen de Mire los muros de la patria mía. El autor es Quevedo. La época es siglo de oro, que pertenece al barroco. Okay, bar el barroco es parte del siglo de oro. El tema es carpe diem. La métrica del poema es soneto. España está en declive. So the author is Quevedo. It's siglo de oro, part of Baroque. Baroque is part of siglo de oro. Carpe diem is the theme, seize the day, live in the moment. The meter form of the poem is a sonnet. And it's an example showing how Spain is in decline. 
All right, gracias por ver. Espero que ustedes salgan bien en su próximo examen. And espero que ustedes vean mis próximos videos. Hasta pronto. Chao. Nos vemos.